So the Tigers, the moment that went viral was Riley Green's home plate pantsing. But uh, the, the the truth is it was a, kind of an early season important come from behind win. <laughs> uh, during the course of the season, you're going to have periods of time where you're playing well and you're playing poorly, uh, where your pitching's coming through, your hitting's not, where your hitting is on fire. Um, you're going to have a game where you score 20 runs. You're going to have a game where you give up 20 runs. And there's also going to be wins like that last night. Uh, we were talking about how frustrating the the losing streak had been because they'd lost three or four and the offense had done very little. And the truth was the pitching hadn't been great either. But the offense was expected to be uh, quite possibly a challenge this year. In the early par- portion of the season, it has been. And we brought up Gator. To some people, that's the most frustrating way to lose a game. To me, the fr- most frustrating way to lose a game is – of bullpen meltdowns where you you build a lead through the bulk of the game with your guys and then you hand it over to a bullpen and and you know my my whole thing is then the bullpen promptly can't throw strikes and you walk the first two lead off walks how many people i mean despise lead off walks when you have a lead, when you when you get them great and when you give them up it just feels like the percentage of leadoff walks coming back to haunt you yeah. is is extraordinarily high. Like the late Jim Price used to say, oh, those base on balls. Yeah. And and so Pittsburgh takes a 3-1 to one lead to the ninth inning. They hand it over to their closer, David Bednar, and he's wild. And has not been had not been good prior to this either. Yeah. So this season. Uh I believe that's his third blown save already the season started like 40 minutes ago and he's got three blown saves so the tigers put a four spot up in the top of the ninth it was kind of a hell yeah moment it 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 felt like what we hope is some sort of offensive exorcism that can jumpstart this team i suppose i wish they didn't have today off but um but it was it was it was nice, wasn't it? That was fun. Yeah, I was uh, I was charged up at home to say the least, uh, watching the game. And I, you get to the ninth inning, and you don't want this three game losing streak to turn into a four game losing streak and turn into something worse than that. And needed to get the stop, and they got the stop. It, it happened last night in the ninth inning. They uh, were able to be a little bit patient. And you, you saw wildness and take advantage of it. Okay, if they're going to give you bases, take them. Yeah, you know, if so, don't don't apologize for it. Just do what you got to do. No, and then they had the bloop single. The Benetti re- drawn in infield. Yeah, the Benetti referred to as a parachute that you're just dying to, to like hit the ground already, and yeah. it did. Yeah, finally it dropped on the ground. But yeah, if they're playing at normal depth, not even double play depth, normal depth, that, that that's a pop up, and yep. it's an out. Yep. But it wasn't in this situation. And great. They drew the infield in, and it couldn't have worked out better. Um, But, I mean, Bednar was walk, two hit batters, and I think it was three hits, three singles. Uh, Yeah, he recorded gave up, um, three hits and a yeah, walk and a hit by batter. And then they got into the ninth batters. inning and they kind of moved, had to move some guys around, and Mark Canna ended up at first base, a position he didn't play all spring. Um, <laughs> but... Ah, uh, they had to do. They had to do some shuffling there, and Jason Foley got the job done uh, with a big double play ball. And yeah, Foley got hit. He got hit yep, hard. Actually, yep. everything was hit right up the middle. And fortunately for him, there was one that went right to Colt Keith. Step on the bag and throw it. And Colt Keith had a hell of a play earlier in the game in a Colt field. Keith the one thing very solid. The one second thing base. about Colt Keith that was was brought into question was just being an average second baseman and and. He's made some above average plays at second uh in his short time here in Detroit. And he hit the ball hard again yesterday. Didn't always result in you know, I mean, all you can do is you can barrel it up and hit line drives and didn't get rewarded for it. But bottom line is that's a nice win. That's a nice win given where this team was. And it was a it was a decent, not great, but a step in the right direction kind of outing for Casey Mize. Who was touching ninety eight on the gun and gave up two earned runs through five innings. Yeah, gave him the five innings, which was important. Um, and the only two runs, I'll take it in his second outing. 
you know, you think about this, he, had, he missed over 700 days of baseball pitching in the majors with the injury. Came back, his first start wasn't very good. This one was much better. And just give your team a chance, right? Mm-hmm. And two runs through five innings is giving your team a chance. We'd like to see the offense start to click a lot better. Um, and we won't know until maybe even Friday, perhaps now, because of the the weather situation tomorrow. But we'll see what they have. Big series against the Twins. It's a you know, preseason team people thought was going to be the top of the division. I think we still think it's probably one of the better teams and maybe the best team in the division, even though Kansas City's playing the best baseball right now. This division is, uh, I think it's safe to say it's up for grabs. Yep. yep. Kansas City wants a piece. Minnesota feels like they got it. The Tigers, are, they're hungry for it. And, you know, Cleveland's saying, don't forget us. We got some uh, We got some young, young players here we like. So this is going to be a fun season. It is. I mean, it's probably it's probably four teams all saying the same thing, and that's fine. Um, well, go by last year. What happened when these teams played each other? It, it was good for Detroit. It was dominant for the Tigers. Yep. So continue to dominate. Yep. Um, now they're a <laughs> they're in some ways like the Red Wings. They're considered to be a best and average team, but they're you know they're three games over. Three games over. They're going to be ups and downs, man. That's just the way it is. Especially when you are likely what you are expected to be. Like I said, an average team. They likely are, but somebody who's an average team will piece together, just get that extra, you know, win or two a month and find themselves in a in a playoff hunt. Um, and I don't know if this is that win, right? This is one that was completely snatched from the jaws of defeat. Well, but it was against a team that got off to a hot start. Pirates are nine and two going into that game, looking to go ten and two. They were just three outs away, and they couldn't get it done. The Tigers came back, did exactly what you said, snatched it from the uh, the jaws of defeat there. And um, at, at seven and four, continuing to stay above five hundred every day this year on the season. You, you brought it up last year. What, how many days were they in, in above five hundred last year? Zero. None days. The year before, how many? One, One opening day, opening day, and this year it's been every day since day one. Yep. So keep that up. 